Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start our uh, special presentation, and the first item that we're going to recognize tonight is uh, Art in the City Council uh, program presentation. Uh, Councilman Steve Shelley. Thank you, Mayor. I have the, uh, the great opportunity here to present Robert Chaplin. His work is currently um, what you see presented here in the Council Chambers, and what they are is they are all the historic sites. I'll let him come up here in a minute. And, and talk about the work. But the one thing I want to kind of state is that Mr. Chaplin was the inaugural artist or photographer to kick off my Art in the Chambers exhibit. And now this is potentially our last month here in the Council Chambers. So although the program will continue in a different form, he is now going to be our last presenter and our last photographer to present his work here in the Council Chambers before we move on to bigger and better places. And with that, I'll go ahead and read his biography. Robert Chaplin is fast becoming the most talked about photographer in South Florida. He is a native South Floridian whose professional photographic career began in June of 2009. Robert is now considered by many to be among the most renowned photographers of wildlife and the natural beauty of Everglades National Park. In addition to capturing the beauty of nature on canvas, Robert also dedicates his time to teach others the skills that he has mastered through his photography workshops. People come from around the country to glean some of Robert's skills. These clients are already serious shutterbugs who are interested in taking their photographic skills to the top level. Robert also leads white lightning workshops that find him and his clients chasing storms and taking photos of lightning strikes during the storm season in South Florida. Robert's work was recently featured in the South Bay Newsleader in a four-part series dedicated to rediscovering the Everglades. Robert is also involved in the local community and is always willing to give back. He serves as president of the local Rotary Club here in the city of Homestead. Please help me welcome my friend and true friend of Homestead, Mr. Robert Chaplin. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Thank you for the introduction. I appreciate that. This is, uh, this is really a treat for me. This exhibit started out at uh, Art South. That's why you'll notice on it it says, um, what does it say down to Brown's Art South Exhibit, April 2012. And what I decided to do with this is uh, Yvonne Knowles had given me a list of all of the historic sites that are registered in the city of Homestead. I know there's older buildings, but these are on her registered sites. And I thought it would be a cool exhibit to do at Art South. Well, somehow that I think the council found out about it, Yvonne found out about it, and it grew from there. And this is just a, a way to record the history of Homestead. Now, some of you know and some of you may not know, I'm not really from Homestead. I'm kind of an outsider down here and I've got an affinity to, for this town. And I've been in the Rotary Club now for four years, president two years, and uh, I really enjoy being down here. When I take my clients to the Everglades, I put them up in your town and it's really a fantastic place. So it's kind of been a pleasure for me to be a part of it and to be a part of the, the council and, and Councilman Shelley's Art in the Chambers, the, the inaugural program, and then also this final one that could be in the chambers here. Let's see, getting ahead of myself. All right, the intent of this, this, this isn't for us today. The intent of this exhibit is going to be 50 years or 100 years from now when these young people are looking back at, a, at an article that might be in the South Bay News Leader as an insert, like they've got their centennial, it's for them to look at and to say, I remember that. I remember it as it was and look at the changes happen. So it's to be viewed 50 or 100 years from now. Uh, and actually, Yvonne and Council, this exhibit is looking for a home when it's done with from here. And in each photo, I wanted to include something that said something about today's time and place. So there's a vehicle included in some of them. It'll be one of those when you look at the ages ago uh, uh, Fuchs Bakery. There's a UPS truck in it. Now who knows, maybe one day there will no longer be commercial vehicles on Chrome Avenue. And if there is, we've captured that. My truck is actually in one of these images. There's a police car in the Neverking Cooper one. I asked that officer to leave his car there because it's my understanding you guys have upgraded your cars. So just from the time I did this exhibit back in April, history is already evolving and changing Homestead. You'll even notice there's one of them over there that says Forever Gone. Now Yvonne probably wishes I didn't have it on my list. It was on my list. I couldn't find it. That police officer at Neva King Cooper, I told him, I need this address, and he took me over there and said it should be right here. Come to find out, that house was tore down two months before I did this exhibit, and it's my understanding that the gentleman that grew up in that house stood there and watched it get tore down. History is changing. 
day by day. Sometimes we notice it, sometimes we don't. Sometimes it takes a milestone. And I think this today is one of those milestones. If I may, I'm going to record some history. Okay? Hello, Mayor. How are you? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture. If I can get this to the news leader tonight, they may run it as the last photo in council chambers. May I? Please. Yeah, I'm a professional. Don't try that at home. I want to take a couple. Ready? One, two, and stop. You can even look at me if you'd like. Hi, Miss Judy. Ready? One, two, three. I'm going to take one of you guys because when you young people look at another exhibit, you guys are going to say, I was there. I was at the last meeting in this town hall. So if I may, one more. All right, everybody. One, two, three. If I'm as good as I think I am, that should show up in the newspaper. Well, anyhow, thank you again for the opportunity to be a part of Homestead and to be a part of this exhibit. And I want to leave you with one thing. I usually try not to get too political on people, but this was something I had told the, the Rotary Club to. Let us remember that everything changes. It either grows or decays. Let's let history find us on the side of growth. Thank you, guys. Okay, kind of out of order, we're going to take the next uh, item, Councilman Wallman, um, Hurricane Sandy Relief Drive presentation. Good evening. <laughs> As you can tell, I've been rushing around here trying to get all this organized. Um, tonight we're going to celebrate our volunteers who came together and helped us fill a semi-tractor trailer truck to send hurricane relief supplies to the victims of, Her of Hurricane Sandy. And there's so many of them that um, I'm just going to get right into it. Um, I can tell you that when I started this endeavor, it was just spur of the moment. Where's Adrian? Oh, there's uh, Benny. Are you here? Where's Benny? There he is. Okay, Benny and Adrian, come up here with me, and I'll talk while they come. <laughs> Um, I just put it out on Facebook. I said, um, "Gee, I'd really like to pay back." This is Benny Butler. Benny. <laughs> and here's my other bestie, Adrian Griffiths. Um, so I just put it out on Facebook. I said, "Gee, I'd really like to do this." You know, I haven't heard of anybody from Homestead doing anything. And uh, it'd be a dream. Uh, it'd be something that kind of might, would be impossible because first I need a truck, and then I need volunteers. So in 12 hours, this woman, not only did she find me a truck, <laughs> I almost had a heart attack when I saw the size of the truck. <laughs> I need you to do it. I mean, it was a semi truck. Uh, well, yeah, it was a semi truck. foot truck. Yeah. And I went, okay, guys, we can do this. And then Benny, within those 12 hours, said, I'm your volunteer, no problem, I'm there. When the doors are open, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking over Thanksgiving. I mean, what are we doing in 10 days? Mm -hmm. 10 days. And it was just amazing. And not only did we fill the truck, there was a lot of love in that truck. A lot of love. And... Um, it just meant so much to me that I have good, 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 good friends and new friends that came out and helped. So with that being said, um, Heather is here. And where's Miss Floor? Right behind you. She's so little. <laughs> I said, Floor and I are going to need a box up here tonight so we can see us, to set a step stool. Um, the first six awards I'd like to give out, and Heather, are you ready? Um, first is to Congressman Joe Garcia, and I know that he's not here with us tonight. He's in Washington, but uh, Kevin, are you here? His aide? 
Okay, well, we'll have Joe back another night when we can really honor him because let me tell you what, that man, he came through. He came through. <laughs> he brought his own truck down and helped us load. Um, Chief Roll. He's in the kitchen. Carlos, did you? <laughs> Begonia, I need you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's in there eating probably. <laughs> um, Captain Bo. There he is. Captain Bo is with the Emergency Management and Homeland, and I mean, he was terrific. He, he, um, he's, from, he's from that area. So he was my go man. I mean, he was the one that put things together logistically. And I think Chief is rounding the corner. Chief. <laughs> Come on up here. In defense of the chief, his meeting doesn't start till 6 o'clock. <laughs> I guess we should have told him. Chief Roll, come up here, please. I just want to thank you for all your work and your duty and your dedication for helping us put together the, the relief drive. It was because of you that so much of this was done. Sure. And um, Jose, I can never say it, but I think, Camarillo. Camarillo, here's my floor. She's my interpreter tonight. He's the owner of Skynet. And this man just, he knew we needed help. And within minutes, he just wrote us a $5,000 check. And we went shopping. <laughs> I mean, it was the first time I was ever on a, 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 what do you call those things? A forklift at BJ's. <laughs> so, I mean, it was just amazing. So, with that being said, Jose's not here tonight, but Patrick Williams, I think, is here to accept this award for him. <clears throat> This is, I have another one for you too, but do you want to pass them out to everybody that, sure. that's here, Adrian and McCain? Yeah. Okay, so at first I'd like to get a picture, come on guys. <laughs> first I'd like to get a picture of this core group, and then I'm going to um, call everybody else up. And as I call the, the remainder group up, I'd like you to come, accept your certificate, and then stand in front of the uh, the audience here so we can get a nice picture. Okay, we really do love each other. <laughs> we, I guess I want them to death. <laughs> Come on, Everybody, I'll get in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now we're going to talk about all the volunteers. Just stay up here with me, guys. All the volunteers that came to the truck and just lent a hand. Um, these are not, I mean, of course, there's many more hundreds and hundreds of people who came and dropped off things. And when the truck was open, it was just amazing how many people would drive by and say, I'll be right back. Right, Benny? I'll be, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. And they would go and bring things back. So, with that being said, the first person I'd like to give an award out tonight is Steve Shiver. Now, Steve is a um, former councilman, former mayor of the city of Homestead, former county manager of Day County, and he's recently moved back to town. And um, he uh, he really helped me. He 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 got me in he got me in contact with Jose. I can say within minutes we had a five thousand dollar check. But he's always been there for me, and I really appreciate everything you do. So there you go. And unfortunately, you're going to be the model. <laughs> he's going to be our model. If you want to take pictures, he'll pose. Um, Dennis Lewis with Skynet. <clears throat> okay, four. Um, oh, I'm not going to mess this one up. Yes, sir? Yes, sir? Yes, sir? There you Did I do it right? Jasir Trigil. Okay. There you go. Let's guide that. Yay, I didn't mess it up. Rosa <laughs> um, Brito with our Chamber of Commerce. And let me tell you, she worked. 
She worked. She came out. She was there when we weren't even there. <laughs> she came out and then, uh, and I'm so happy that the chamber were all working together. It's great to work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Floor's my is going to help me here when I need help. So, um, Jim Leonard is Jim. There he is. Come on, big Jim. Jim flies a plane. <laughs> and he's in and out of the country one week. And and he's dedicated every single day off to being at the truck. And he's Benny's other half. But he's my friend. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Probably have my lipstick now. <laughs> um, Roger Souter isn't here tonight, is he? No. Okay. Well, we're figures. We love Roger and Norma. Roger used to work for the city of Homestead and he didn't want any pictures taken of himself. He didn't want Bonnie, no. he didn't want any publicity. But that man was at that truck when the when the when the door went open. So every, every day. So I'm gonna make sure Roger gets his award and publicly thank him because we call him the black heart, but he really has a heart of gold. He just doesn't want you to know it. <laughs> so thank you, Roger. Floor, this is for her. <laughs> She's always there, anytime we need her. Okay, you want to do this one? George Ed Garrett from SOS. Oh, she has to step out. Oh, she had to step out? Okay. Tammy Reyes. Tammy Reyes? Tammy, is Tammy here? Tammy's here. Oh, good. Yay, Tammy, I wasn't sure if you were going to be here. Oh, no, where's my other list? Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm just going to let four take over here until I Guadalupe stop. Leal from SOS. <laughs> Arlene Guillen. <laughs> Ileana Rodriguez. Ileana Sanchez. Sorry, we just had a little mishap. Um, we had a Carmen Sanchez. <laughs> Valerie Jimenez. See, I have to understand, I can make you understand, this southern accent doesn't roll well with some of these um, <laughs> names. <laughs> Japan Diana Will. Diana Wilson? No? Not here? Okay. Is Peggy here? Peggy Moore? Okay. No. Linda Fagan, she's here. See, I can say this. <laughs> Dr. Fagan, I should say, Dr. Fagan. Um, Mary Jo's not here. Um, Spencer Wheelback. Come. Thank you. Marguerite Shan, my buddy, my neighbor, my love. Nick Singoni, Miss Bonnie King Milan. I have to say something about Ernie Hernandez. Where's Ernie? Come up here. And his wife. And his wife. Uh, Brenda, right? Brenda. Brenda Nesser. Um, Come on. I don't have a plaque for you yet, Brenda, but I will. Uh, Ernie, not only did he call me and say, or did, well, we say he's booked. I'm really getting good at that Facebook. I just messed it up a couple times. <laughs> but not only did he say, what can I do to help, he came down with a truck of water, and I don't know what else, and he worked. He worked. He loaded. He moved. He did everything. Now, it helps that he owns a spa, a chiropractic spa. <laughs> but uh, I know I hurt my shoulder while I was doing some of that stuff, and they, they gave me a little rub down, and, and I thank you so much. Thank you. It's, it's businesses like you and Skynet and all the others that mean the, the most. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So, he needs to take
And now we have Girl Scout Troop number 138. And I'm going to, is Nancy Gonzalez here? Nancy. Um, if you want to just stand right here and, and collect all your, all the, the people. Um, this is a lot of work, let me tell you. Thank you, Heather, for putting this together. Olivia Dean. Come on, darling. Come right over here. Kimberly Gonzalez. For sure. Daniela Penado. Penado? Daniela, Daniela Penado. No? Okay. Kimberly Carranza. Okay, this one we're going to mess it up both of us. Giselle uh, and Isabella. Hatatel and Isabella. Yay, there they are. Okay, these are my little, these are my little angels. Excuse me. These are my little angels that came out. They work the health signs on the road. They did everything. I mean, they're precious. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is Clara Spell here? No, she's not. Okay. So is that, Heather, is that it? Okay. With that being said, I'd like to ask my other volunteers to head up here with me. Chief's looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> Oh, you must go here? Yeah. Oh, no. that the uh, truck arrived in New York. It took them three days to get there. Um, it took them three days to get there, and um, I had the great opportunity to talk to the president. Um, president, can you hear me? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to move things along. So I had a great opportunity to speak to President Helen Marshall. Um, who is the president of the Queens Bureau Borough in, in New York, and they were so grateful. They were so grateful to receive the truck. And Homestead Hospital, I mean, everybody helped us uh, with donations. But the most important thing to me tonight, can y'all hear me? Shh. I'll be my shh. <laughs> um, the most important thing tonight for me was to honor the volunteers because the volunteers, if I hadn't had you guys, it wouldn't have gotten done. So thank you again. Now, we're going to move right in. Mayor, is it okay to move right into the toy drive? Heather, I've got this. It's so messed up. <laughs> okay. All right, what goes with this page? Yeah. Just this one? Yeah. Just this one? Okay. Mayor, may I move on with the toy drive? Yes, please. Okay. I'm, I'm getting, um, I'm multitasking here. <laughs> me too. Um, on top of the Hurricane Sandy Relief Drive, um, every year I do a toy drive for the um, Homestead Soup Kitchen. And um, it was a lot of work. 
Um, and we did it on Christmas Eve morning, which was unbelievable. I mean, it was so hard to, to get everybody out. But I wanted to thank everyone. Is uh, Miss Juanita Smith here tonight? Oh, Miss Juanita, come up here. Is Miss Greer Wallace here tonight? No? Okay. This year we probably, ha I don't even know how many kids we had, um, Ms. Juanita might have a better record, but there was, they were coming from everywhere, and, and, and I would say there were over 300 kids there, would you agree with me? Well, well over 300 kids, and um, one thing that I, I didn't get a chance to speak to Ms. Juanita about, but I know that she wants to thank Weiss Rota for their, their check to the uh, Homestead Soup Kitchen for $1,000. Yes, go ahead. I would just like to let you know that nothing is any better than getting a thousand dollars, especially when you don't have any, anything. May God bless you because we are really in need. And I want to thank all of you for your kindness and for the consideration, how you send things over. They're very small to you, but they're very large to us. Remember, I just want you to for not forget that we are here today but just like the folks in New Jersey, we can be homeless tomorrow. So remember, what you give is what you live. And we don't live very well. Thank you. And I have to tell you that um, our city attorneys do that. They do that every year from the bottom of their heart, and not one penny of that money goes to the toys. It all goes to the soup kitchen to feed the people. And I just encourage all of you next year to come down with me because if you, I mean, it just makes you realize that we are so blessed. I mean, we are so blessed in this town to have what we have. And there are so many that have nothing. So, Ms. Juanita, I didn't want you to sit down yet, but <laughs> she's over there already. Um, I see that Kevin's here now. Kevin um, from Joe Garcia's office. Come forward, Kevin. Kevin Chambers, he's um, Joe Garcia's aide um, and represents Sade County. We have an award for Joe from um, before as well. Um, and I wanted to say that I put the shout out to Joe that we needed help with the soup kitchen and that not only did they come through, they brought a whole van full of stuff. So if you'd like to say something on Cong Congressman Joe Garcia's behalf. Greetings, everyone. Um, our congressman is fighting hard for us in D.C. right now. Um, but he would like everyone in this community to know that it's one of those communities that has been with him for a long time. Okay, um, and now that he has an opportunity to be in a position to where he can give back to this community, every opportunity, every chance that he can, he will do so. Um, so when Ms. Walman asked us to to assist, it was um, it, it was an easy um, answer, and we were glad that we were able um, to help out with the um, the hurricane relief drive efforts, also to help out um, in giving um, uh, a couple of uh, what about 150. Uh, Cartons of juices, something like that. We, we, we gave it to the soup kitchen as well. And um, anytime that this community um, needs anything um, from the office of the congressman, uh, you can definitely let us know and we'll be right there to serve you. Thank you. Thank you. And I have to tell you, Kevin, is, he's, he's such a champ. I mean, he's right there. He, is, he believes in South Aid and he loves us all too, and, and he's always there for us. And I have him on speed dial, which he probably regrets very much. <laughs> um, next, I'd like to introduce to you Ms. Veronica Rivera. Ms. Rivera. And her class. And her class. <laughs> Ah, uh, thank you for coming. Ms. Rivera, she's a teacher at Keysgate High School. And she contacted me and she said, we want to help with the toy drive. And would, you, would your class please come forward? I want you all to see who you are. Come on. <laughs> um, actually, I wanted to just say that these kids went out and they collected toys for us. They were so wonderful. And your generosity, your spirit of giving will always be known in our community. And I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And the children, thank you.
Ms. Smith, you want to, Kevin, you guys come on up here and stay. I want to get a picture afterwards. Um, Maria Lombardo from Mamma Mia. She's probably cooking. <laughs> um, is, is Jimmy Ocursio here or Carmen Tellerico? All of the names that I read to you are names of people who really came out and helped us with um, the toy drive. Um, the Big Cheese, Richard, first floor. <laughs> so, come on, Richard, are you here? Big Cheese? You can tell me how to pronounce your last name. I think it's So Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Anyway, we thank you, Juan Gallo from Walgreens. Oh, there's Juan. There's my buddy. Not only did Juan help me, <laughs> he, um, he's my friend. He opened the new Walgreens um, that uh, I go to the village, at the Villages of Homestead. And they set up toy drives in all the Walgreens and collected hundreds of toys. I mean, amazingly so. And um, not only did he help me with that, but I got a phone call a couple of days ago, and he gave me about, I don't know, 300 pounds of candy that we were able to donate to the SOS for the children of SOS. And, and thank you, Juan. You're my hero, really. You are. And also, he, he helped with uh, Malibu Bay is Diane Pendergrass. There's my buddy. <laughs> I think I was probably one of the first people she met when she came to Homestead, right, Diane? I sold her a house. <laughs> but not only has Diane remained my buddy and my friend, she's also um, um, an officer with the HOA at Malibu Bay, and, uh, but, and Juan is as well. And between the two of them, they keep me in touch with the residents of Waterstone and know what's going on. And I love you both very, very much. You know that very, very much. Ms. Campbell, Ruth Campbell, I here tonight. Uh, Jackie from the um, community center. Jackie helped us. And Jackie's a cheerleader. I mean, she just promotes the heck out of everything. So I know she was saying, don't y'all want to put a toy in that box over there? <laughs> I can hear her saying it. <laughs> so, and of course, uh, Greer Wallace isn't here tonight, but Greer is just wonderful. And I've also forgotten somebody, and that's the Chamber of Commerce, because and she'll come up again. Like, I'll get your certificate. You don't understand, this has been crazy. Uh, not only did they help us, they gave us a huge, my Jeep was full of toys. That's toys. So we'll make sure that, uh, Heather, we'll make sure that the chamber gets cut again. Always, 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 always. So if there's anybody I've forgotten, don't hesitate to let me know because um, it's all about you. You're the ones who, who give to these, these functions and these organizations. You're the ones. Without you, I can't make anything happen. So Ms. Smith, you join with me in saying thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you to everyone. And and one certificate that I didn't give out tonight um, is to my husband, Merv, Dr. Merv. <laughs> but I can tell you that he he oh my gosh he ran himself to death making these two events happen. And happy birthday, my love. His birthday. <laughs> and, uh, he's, he's my right arm, so thank you so much, sweetie, for helping us. And, and Ms. Juanita knows how much he's done at the soup kitchen, so I'd like to get a picture, and again, I'd like to say thank you. Okay, can I get everybody over here again? You're such a large group. <laughs>
so you're set after this, right? Okay. Okay, let us stay within the spirit of giving. And uh, I'd like to call Dade Medical College up, whoever's here representing Dade Medical College. This is an organization that, that moved to Homestead about five years ago, and uh, they started giving five years ago, and they haven't stopped giving. And I'm going to tell you that um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to stand here tonight uh, with Liz. Uh, is, is, uh, what's your title? Give it to me. Vice President of Community and Governmental Relations. Vice President of Community and Government Relationship. I also didn't even remember. It, it, exactly. But they, they do so much. Um, 250 turkeys at Thanksgiving. 250 turkeys brought them to our community center, center and said, Mayor, you know who best needs these turkeys. And we reached out to, to some very worthy, worthy and needy organizations. Soup Kitchen was one of them. Juanita knows we, we were there. Um, it was incredible. Um, United Methodist Church. Uh, we did the, um, the uh, Greater New Mount Sinai Church. We did the uh, Deco Gardens. Uh, we did Galata, which is a Haitian organization uh, that every year we never have enough. And these people, as, as Ms. Walman said earlier, are so needy and so deserving of what we're there with. It's incredible. And then Dave Medical College came back at Christmas time and brought boxes and boxes of toys, 300, 400 toys, and said, Mary, you know best. Take these to the organizations that need them the most. So with that, I would love to give you the proclamation to take back to uh, Mr. Ernesto Perez and, and everyone else in the organization uh, that we thank so much of in recognition of your commitment to making a difference in our community. Thank you for your commitment and support, your caring commitment to impacting the lives of our residents. 2012 holiday season turkey toy drive, the city of Homestead salutes you. Oh no, I can talk to anybody but not in front of people. But anyway, um, on behalf of our CEO Ernesto Perez and myself, uh, Liz Martinez, I, I don't know, I get emotional because the uh, homestead is like the little city that could for us. You know, we started our campus here a couple years ago and um, we were kind of like the new kid on the block and we've really become a part of this community and we've really sort of just become parts, a part of a lot of different little things that we've been helping out with, whether it's SOS or the, I mean, just so many things down here. This is like our, our little home away from home and we're just really happy to be a, a great community partner and we look forward to a, a long and happy marriage with you guys. So, thank you. And as uh, the mayor of this great city, you get to do a lot of beautiful things uh, and a lot of fun things, and then you have to do a lot of challenging things. And, and challenging, uh, I work very closely with SOS, Start Off Smart, great organization that's connected to our police department. They do wonderful things, and they bring awareness to very ugly things like human trafficking. So we're going to see a short video here, for, if you'll come back up, please. Um, we're going to see a short uh, presentation, and, and then we're going to hear from one of the SOS uh, individuals, and, uh, and then I'm going to, uh, if there's a good side to it, give a proclamation, because the awareness is so important uh, to this very, very, very bad crime. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Flora Swag, and I'm a victim advocate for human trafficking with the Startup Smart um, at the Homestead Police Department. And we talk so much about giving and what people we don't, doesn't have and what they need. And unfortunately, um, human trafficking is a national problem, but let's start with our own background. I'm, I'm sorry, our own backyard, that this issue is happening in our own backyard, in our own communities. So I want to start with showing you a little video 
It's up on our screen. Okay, well, what is human trafficking? Human trafficking is a modern-day modern form of slavery, and it's a crime in the U.S. and the United States. The victims of trafficking and violence protect. There's a protection that protects the victims. And the human trafficking is the recruitment, harboring, transportation, provision, or obtaining of a person for labor or services through the use of force, fraud, and corrosion. What do we do at Homestead Police Department and the SOS? We assist victims of human trafficking with any services they might need, whether it's housing, education, and especially protection. That some of these victims do not want to come forward because in their own country, there's a corrupt police department. There's, a, there's no assistance for them. They're immigrants, and they don't know where to run for assistance. So at the Homestead Police Department, we assist them to get that services without any fear of that victim coming in and being deported or even harmed any further. We, we have many victims, and unfortunately, we only have a small group that works with us. Um, today we have our, one of our detectives, Detective Aquino, who was one of our lead detectives in investigating these cases. How can we identify victims of human trafficking? They're in the sex industry, domestic situations, sweatshops, factories, construction, farm work, fisheries, hotel and tourist industries, and pan, pan handling. Project SOS sustains itself and its programs only through grants. We have two ma major events and fundraisers throughout the year, and one of our event events is coming up, which is our 5K run, February the 24th. And if you don't want to walk or run, you can also go dance, because we have a gala on April the 20th. We do fundraisers so, so we can continue to assist these victims, whether it's getting diapers or food. Imagine finding a victim at 2 o'clock in the morning and they don't have any clothes or they have children and we can't, they don't have any food to buy or any diapers or any baby milk and that money that we do with a, for our fundraisers, we can put them up in the hotels or find emergency assistance for these victims. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it, <laughs> You know, when we think of human trafficking, we think of, of smuggling people, you know, from one country to another country, and, and it's, not, it's not that at all. It is truly right here in our backyard, and we need to all be very aware of it uh, and, and report what we see and what we, what we think may be human trafficking, because we've got a good team that works very hard to do the right thing for the right reason. So with that, um, I'm going to give you the whereas is. Whereas human trafficking is a crime against individuals that violate the most basic human rights of our, of our victims and deprive them of several, uh, deprive them of every shred of personal freedom. And whereas held against their will, victims of human trafficking are subject to forced labor, sexual exploitation, involuntary servitude, and other types of mental and physical abuse. Whereas human trafficking targets men, women, children, isolating them from society and exploiting them from every personal gain. Now, therefore, I, Stephen C. Bateman, the mayor of the city of Homestead, hereby do, do proclaim the month of January 2013 as Human Trafficking Awareness.
Thank you. <laughs> Not pictures. All right, the next item uh, on the agenda is uh, going to be presented uh, by Patricia Faircloth McCormick, Councilman Patricia Faircloth McCormick, if you'll come forward. Uh, the item is going to be Bicycle Holiday Books and Bikes. Yeah. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you. I guess the theme of our presentation this evening is giving. And what we've experienced tonight as far as our presentations is a true spirit of this community. So with that, I would like to present some certificates of appreciation to local businesses, nonprofits, and community stakeholders who financially supported my Books and Bicycles initiative that I started last year as a means to provide a gift of education and recreation to our boys and girls in this community whose families are experiencing economic hardship due to the economic downturn. So I would like to start off by recognizing Infinity Auto Insurance. And would you come to the podium, Carrie Wong, if you can please join me as well. Infinity Auto Insurance has a program called Read Conmigo, and this is their second year supporting my Books and Bicycles initiative by providing a bag of books to all of our boys and girls. And in addition to providing books to this initiative, they work tirelessly throughout this community to support literacy within our schools. They've had a very busy day today. I understand that they were recognized by the Miami-Dade County Public School District for their support in this community. And I found out from them through Terry Wong, who works as equally as hard as them to support our local schools. So I would like to present them a proclamation, and it reads in part, means I'm not reading it all. Whereas Rico Migo, a program sponsored by Infinity Auto Insurance, is a parent-focused bil bilingual literacy campaign that encourages Hispanic parents to read to their children at home through the distribution of free English-Spanish children's books. Whereas Read Mingo has featured at over 120 and schools, schools and events, including our annual Christmas Books and Bicycles giveaway for the past two years. Whereas the City of Homestead salutes Infinity Auto Insurance for generously donating time and resources to transform the youth in Miami-Dade County school system through the Read Conmigo program and encouraging parents and children to spend time reading together. Now, therefore, I, on behalf of Stephen C. Bateman, the mayor of the city of Homestead, Florida, does hereby proclaim the 16th day of January as Infinity Auto Insurance Read Conmigo Day. Good evening, everyone. This is an honor for all of us at Infinity Insurance. And a lot of you may be wondering what does uh, insurance have to do with reading and uh, bilingual literacy specifically, which is what Read Conmigo targets. Um, and really, the connection is based on gratitude. Uh, you can't sell insurance if you're not grateful to the communities that have helped you on the business side. And uh, we want to make sure that we can return to the local communities uh, with a gift that has longevity and that is uh, no better gift for children than to give them our time and to give them our time and the gift of learning and the gift of reading. So, um, you know, I often wake up in the morning and I thank for my blessings of working for a company that allows me to collect a paycheck for helping my community. Uh, I am from Miami as well, though our company is based out of Birmingham, Alabama, and our corporate mission and on the business side is to serve others. We serve them through our products, uh, but more importantly, I think we, we really serve them with our hearts and our commitments to uh, the local communities and the city of Homestead, of course, is absolutely no exception. So thank you very much, and uh, I hope that you can share this gift with your families by visiting readconmigo.org. Uh, you're free to register all the children in your family. The program is 100% for free, and you will receive bilingual English and Spanish books uh, on a regular basis. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, 
And if there are any PTAs or schools that would like the support of Infinity Auto Insurance, in addition to providing books, they host movie night, popcorn nights at your school. They bring all the materials, and it's a wonderful time. They were just at my school, I believe, last month. So if you would like more information on Rico Amigo, please visit the website that was presented to you. Moving along, at this time I would like to recognize the local businesses, nonprofits, and individuals that financially supported the bicycle portion of this event. And when I call your name, if you're here to represent the business or yourself, please join me at the podium. First National Bank of South Florida is Sandra Lange, Senior Vice President. Come on. Armstrong Ford, Mr. Rick Vicchio, I saw you. Come on over. Community Bank of South Florida. Do we have a representative here from Community Bank? Okay. FPNL, I know you're here, Vice President, Mr. Riley, and Brenda Hovina. <laughs> Homestead Hospital, Mr. Bill Duquette, where are you? Thank you. From Lenard Homes as the corporation, Mr. Felix Martinez. And Felix also contributed on behalf of himself as an individual. So that was a double dose there from Lenar and Felix individually. The Kai's company, Mr. Tony Garcia. Come on, Mr. Garcia. This goes without, without saying, this is for the kids. Incorporation, nonprofit, Mr. Larry Roth. <laughs> Sue Newman and Larry's significant other. The Palace Gardens, Mr. Adam Rosenblum, come join us. Miss Bonnie King, come on Bonnie, come on, come on, she's so humble. Come on Bonnie. And all the members of our Parks and Recreation Department, we lined that community center wall to wall, alphabetical order for all of our boys and girls in this community to receive a gift of education and recreation. From my heart to your hands, I thank you so much for your generosity, and I look forward to working with you in years to come. Thank you so much. Okay, but our final presentation is to a local business, Chefs on the Run. I was so excited when I had a conversation with her, and she'll come up and talk about it in a minute. She shared with me that her business, Chefs on the Run, has been invited to participate in the South Beach Wine and Food Festival. The first business in this city that has been invited to participate in 15 years that have participated in this event. It is phenomenal. So I have a sort of creative type presentation to provide to her, and I have to give a disclaimer. This is not wine. <laughs> it is cranberry juice. <laughs> Don't go say the council is giving out wine at the council meetings. I just wanted to get a bit creative to pay homage to their recognition of being invited to the South Beach Wine and Food Festival, but it comes at a cost. 
So I'm going to let Jessica explain the next step because not only is she representing her business, she's representing Homestead. So we have to make sure we assist her and the company with being able to participate in this event. So with that, I would like to present Jessica to talk a little bit more about this accomplishment and the support that she will need to make it happen. Jessica. Thank you. Again, um, like she said, my name is Jessica Ohake, and I'm one of the owners of Chefs on the Run Assorted Cuisine Restaurant in the downtown historic district on 10 East Maori Drive. Always speaking in front of people makes me nervous. <laughs> um, so, like she said, our restaurant has been invited. When they called originally, I was a skeptic, and I told my husband, yeah, right. So I called back, and he was right. They invited us, and you have to be invited to be part of it. So uh, we were ecstatic until we got all the papers, and then they, uh, they say that you feed 6,000 to 8,000 people for free. And I said, what? Well, who makes the profit? And they said, the Food Network. So I asked when we were going to be there, and what tent we were going to be in, if we were going to be fillers, and they said, no, you're going to be with the chefs. 39 other Miami restaurants and Homestead, little hole in the wall, chefs on the run, is the only time that Homestead has been invited to be part of it. So it's huge exposure, and a lot of the Main Street and the councilmen have known that I have been, I'm a woman of faith, I've been praying since July for traffic in downtown Homestead. I had no idea how dead we were. Um, so, that being said, I wanted to say that since it's the first time in our city that we've been invited to be part of this culinary prestige, we are honored for this opportunity and want to represent the city of Homestead. Um, we want, what we're going to be offering is ahi tuna sliders with horseradish ramalad and seaweed salad, also Mongolian pork satay with soy, lime ginger, aioli, and Asian slaw. Now, for those of you who have eaten at our restaurant, we're choosing not to have things at our restaurant. We're choosing to really wow them. We're going to be with 39 other Miami restaurants. We want them, and on purpose, South Beach Food and Wine Festival asked what what do we put on your banner? I said, you put chefs on the run, assorted cuisine in Homestead. Why do we have to put in Homestead? Because we're in Homestead. No other restaurants do that. Yes, but everybody always thinks that Homestead, and I grew up here, I was born and raised here. Homestead was dead stead when we were little. Like, no, there was nothing to do here and there was nothing to eat here. And so I've dug, and I've told her this, I've dug my feet in really well into the ground, and I know it's hard. Downtown Homestead is really slow, but I feel that this is a great opportunity. I feel that we're the last frontier on the way down to the Keys. I feel that this is a way for 6,000 to 8,000 people to know that we're there, and we need support as sponsors. Um, I did give the councilman, and um, there's really, there's no cash that we get for this, it's all bragging rights. That's what it is. We're in the News Times. We're, we'll be, ironically, next week we will also be on Channel 7, uh, January 24th at 5.30 with Bite with Belkies. She came by and tried our food and they loved it. And that helps us. Uh, in February we'll be on Univision. Um, we're trying to ruffle as many feathers as we can. So, we need $6,419. I have it all written out um, for logos and t-shirts and uh, menus and brochures. And then the Cisco cost of food is $2,918. Um, we're using, with uh, the logos and the hats, we'll be using local business creative threads. For brochures and takeout menus, we'll be using local business Minuteman Press. Tim's Oriental, and we need a, a cargo van. I mean, if anybody can donate that. All again, so it's the amount is six thousand four hundred and nineteen with sixty nine cents. Thank you.
Okay, since she was so shy about telling you how much they need, it was over $6,000. And we have to make sure that this business is a part of the South Beach Wine and Food Festival. So I, I pledged my amount here in this envelope that I won't disclose. It's not a lot, but it's the best I can do. So if those of you in the audience or in TV land or my colleagues, if you can join me with supporting this business, we'd be forever grateful. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. With that, with that being said, is, um, if the mayor's not around the corner or anything, we'll go ahead and close out the presentations and uh, let the clerk have time to get ready to uh, get ready with the council meeting. Thank you. Stick around.